Welcome back everybody to another Halloween product review. Now I can tell from the comments on some of my past videos that a lot of you are very excited to see this new prop in action. This is the Peekaboo Ghoul. It's an animated figure that's supposed to move the curtain side to side and peek out of your window. I got this from Target. It was a little pricey. It was $80, but I guess for what it does, Perhaps that's not so pricey after all when you compare it to a lot of the other animatronics on the market. Um, but just to take a quick glance at the back of this box here, um, it does say it's for indoor or covered porch use only, decorative use, keep away from flames, not a toy, blah, blah, blah. Eh, legalese. Let's go ahead and open it and see what is inside. Okay, it comes nicely boxed. Um, doesn't look like there is a whole lot to it. I do, let's just go ahead and pull this out. I do see some instructions here, a lot of padding. This must be the outfit. I'm gonna go ahead and open that right up. All right, so here are the instructions. Um, they are nice and colored. So it seems like it is a good quality piece so far. All right, we have a box here that I assume is some sort of power plug, all right. We have, okay, cardboard pieces, cardboard pieces that we're holding the torso piece together, I guess. Come back to that in a moment. We've got some bar pieces. Some other metal pieces, a nice head. This is a skull, so it's gonna look extra creepy in the window. Let's go ahead and take that out. There we go, pretty creepy. And then we have a hand piece. I guess this is what's going to open the curtain. And we have a base piece. I can't keep anything on my table today. Um, so let's see if we can get this thing assembled before I just lose everything. All right, I like to try and put these things together on my own, but I think with this one, I'm going to need this beautiful instruction sheet. So let's go ahead and do this together. All right, I'm just gonna pull out the cloth pieces. We've got some sort of shiny fabric and another, some black, some whole bunch of pieces. Okay, we'll come back to those when we get a little closer. Just make some room, gonna throw some of this wrapping down here on the floor. All right, let's just unwrap these pieces real quick. Oh, they had to use tape, jeez. Okay, maybe I can just pull it apart. All right. Okay, getting closer. I guess I could have just pulled it out the end. All right, so two that are labeled B, and they appear to snap right into the base piece here. It's, I love the ones that have the little pin that pushes in and out and holds it together. They snap together so easy, it makes for easy assembly and disassembly. All right, well, it looks like step one is done. That was easy. Step two, we're going to put the, you know what, let me move this table out of the way, give us a little bit more space to work. Okay, so we have assembled the base, the two pieces on top, and now we're going to put together the torso piece, and it has a quick connect pin also, so it can only go on one way, so that's easy. There we go. And the next step is to put the shoulders on and they also only go in one way because the pins are different sizes. So if you put them in wrong, well, you can't possibly put them in wrong since they're different sizes. It only goes in one way, keeps it easy. The next step is to make sure we plug in the adapter. Just plugs in right there. I guess we'll hang that down so we can plug that in later. I like that it is a plug-in and not a battery-operated prop. All right, next comes the head. It also has a forked base. Um, 
which means it can only go in the slot one way, like so. So let's go ahead and turn him around. There you go. Um, you can see he's got shoulders in the back, the face in the front. There is just this one little wire that we're going to need to connect by plugging in the one from the shoulder piece to the head piece. And let's go ahead and see if I can get this to go in somehow. All right, there we go. It snaps together pretty easy. All right, next we have the hand. It also has a fork to end that just goes right into the slots. There we go, he's coming together. Before we go ahead and put on his robes, let's plug him in just to make sure he works and kind of see how he functions. All right, oh, there is an on and off switch in the back. All right. I don't know. It looks like it's on a timer mechanism, so he'll hide. I don't know for how long. <laughs> looks like it's every few seconds he peeks around the curtain. All right, I can tell from the instructions it's basically just on and off. There's no um, way to make the timer mechanism any different or um, you know, it's not motion activated or anything. It's just on and off. All right, the next step is to give him some clothing. Now, these instructions took me a little while to kind of sort through. Um, we need to drape the shroud G over the shoulder frame D around the neck, secure the shroud with the hook and loop closures as shown. The shroud attaches to itself. Now, the diagram was a little hard to see, um, but it looks like, first of all, um, the whole thing opens up. There's several pieces of Velcro. Not, well, not several. There's three. Um, but we are just going to drape this around his neck. The arm piece needs to come through next. And then the next Velcro attaches underneath the arm piece. That was a little unclear in the instructions. But uh, once I figured it out, I think it makes sense now. So there we go. All right, next comes his hood. So it has a couple of pieces that dangle and then the hood piece. So we're just gonna go ahead and put it on his head. There is a piece of Velcro on the top of his head. So it kind of holds it in place. It's very unclear in the instructions how this is supposed to go on. But uh, I think it's gonna be just something like this. These things are supposed to Velcro together down here somewhere. Again, this is very unclear. I guess, is it supposed to go around the hand? That doesn't make any sense. There's nowhere else it could Velcro. So for the moment, we're just gonna do that and uh, move on. More of this creepy cloth looking fabric to drape around his shoulders. Okay. He's filling out. All right, next comes his sleeve and it just says to drape it over his arm and secure it with the Velcro. So again, this is kind of incomprehensible. I see there is a piece of Velcro here at the top center, two pieces. I think it's supposed to go around his arm piece. All right, that was the last step. I clearly have put this on wrong because um, it needs to go, I guess, over his hand. There's a piece of Velcro there. I guess it just goes like that. This seems strange to me. I don't like all the drapey fabric that's so hard to understand. They clearly could have made this a little bit easier. However, 
it doesn't matter too much. He looks very creepy and very scary. And the last step is to just put him in the window. Um, they do give you a curtain for him to use. Um, so this one is kind of a black sheer curtain. I'm not going to use that. I put up my own white sheer curtain and I actually went through a couple of these. The first one you can see I have on my skeleton there. It was just a little bit too sheer. Fortunately, I had one that has a little bit of a pattern in it. I'm sure you can't see that from the video, but it just blocks the light from coming in through just a little bit more. So let's just go ahead and put him in the window and see how he looks. But before that, let's plug him in and see how he works. With the clothing on, all right. Pretty creepy. I like the fact that he doesn't make any noise. Except that little bit of motor, but you know, there's no background noise. He doesn't make any um, sort of comments. He's just there. So let's go ahead and put him in the window, see how he looks. All right, I have left him on the stand just to give him a little bit more height, but here we go. Clearly this isn't gonna work. I'm going to have to take him off the stand because there's just not enough give um, with his hand to clear the curtain when he tries to peer around it. So let's try this again. All right, I am not sure what I am doing wrong. I have tried him in a bunch of different positions and it doesn't seem like his face clears the curtain very much. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what he looks like from outside. All right, so what do you think? As you can see, I have adjusted him in the window again. I had to flip him and the sign around. This is why it's kind of important to do these things well in advance of Halloween because, you know, you're gonna have to test things, make sure they work. In my case, I wasn't really happy with the sight line when you're walking down my path. Um, I didn't think you could really see him from this side of the window very well. Part of the problem too is, you know, um, his hand is only, you know, on one side. He's not reversible. So in my case, I had to you know, split the curtains in the middle here so that he would be able to just peek out the middle of the window instead of like a side of the window. Um, and that's also gonna be important if you use their um, curtain that comes with their product because it is only just one piece. In my case, I'm using my two shears. And it's also, I found it was very hard to position it right so you could see his face actually peeking out from the other side. Um, the trick that I learned is that you pretty much need the top of the curtain or the shear or whatever you use to line up vertically with where his hand rests. I mean, if, if I had closed it so that you know, the curtains met middle when he tried to move um, his arm because there's so much material still hanging over, it would block his face too much. So make sure it's in line with the arm. Um, I also found the lighting, you know, it really depends on how you do your lighting. I have a little lamp sitting underneath him, shining up onto his face just to give it, because if you don't have a light shining on your window from outside, you're not really gonna be able to see him. Um, so I thought with this, it would, you know, it would shine up on his face, give him a little bit more visibility. Um, one of the other problems I found is, you know, during the daylight, he looked fantastic. Um, with the lights on in the background and you could kind of see him peeking 
um, are standing behind the shears. It was kind of creepy. Um, but with the light in front of him, you're obviously not going to get him silhouetted against the, um, the curtains. So you got to play with your lighting, find out what works. What doesn't work, in my opinion, are his big red eyes. Um, especially when it is dark outside and you're looking in the window, um, you, all you can see are those eyes. You don't really get any of the facial features that he's a skeleton. In fact, he kind of looks like an alien. So I'm going to probably try and cover up his eyes, maybe with just a little bit of electrical tape or something, um, so that when he peeks out of the curtain, you actually see the face. Not You're not blinded by the glowing red eyes. Um, but otherwise, he is super creepy. I think he is a fantastic prop. Um, I can't wait to hear what you guys think, what the neighbors think. Um, I've already seen some cars driving by and they kind of slowed down when they approached my house because, you know, the sign in my window <laughs> is very visible. So it's really going to draw the attention. And, uh, hopefully, you know, it'll take them a moment to notice the guy peeking out of the window, but hopefully that'll give them a good scare. So let me know what you think. Um, again, he's from Target. He's $80, a little steep. Hopefully you can find him on sale or have a coupon or something. Um, but I think he's worth it. So that'll wrap it up for today. Um, if you have any comments, again, leave them below. I'd like to read your thoughts. Let me know what you think. And until next time, guys, take care. Happy haunting.